This is the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. On today's program, we're going to talk about the danger ahead. And there is a great danger ahead, and it's moving towards us very quickly. Now, to be silent in the face of this danger, to me, is a morally criminal act. In other words, if you have any understanding of what's coming, and you don't do what you can to educate people, to make a difference, then this is my personal belief, but you have committed a criminal act in the eyes of God because you could have done something to prevent what will eventually create great devastation, horror, pain, murder, etc. And you may be wondering, well, what is he talking about? I'm talking about economics, and I'm not talking about economics the way um, you were taught economics in college or high school, <clears throat> which was nothing more really than blowing smoke in your eyes. I'm not talking about economics like the ads you might see on TV where some big investment firm is going to lie to you in a TV commercial and say that, you know, if you invest your retirement with them, you're going to have these wonderful golden years. And it's all a bunch of lies. It's just a total lies. Because these are the same companies, by the way, and you know who they are. These are the same companies that if you had any money invested for your retirement with these big financial investment companies that love to sell you on how solid, how secure uh, your retirement's going to be, you don't have amnesia. I don't have amnesia. And in 2008, when the market crashed, The average American who had money invested with these so-called safe experts, uh, the the, the figures of the loss vary. Anywhere from the average American lost anywhere from 40% to 60% of his or her retirement. Now, the other thing, which they never tell you, is that There has been a recovery. Uh, um, There has been uh, growth uh, in the market. But when you're calculating all the losses that you may have incurred in 2008, and then you add on to it all the money that you may have made, assuming you weren't wiped out, Uh, up to date, that's not how you get a balanced equation of whether you made money or lost money. Because you see, other very important factors come into play, such as inflation. Okay, so let's let's spell this out very simply. In fact, on this program, we're going to spell out in very simple terms some basic economic con- concepts. But unlike most of the uh, financial planning service type uh, programs and commercials, etc., we're going to tell you the truth because we're going to get into <clears throat> what's facing us as a nation, which is socialism. And we need to define socialism properly. And, and what would be the best way to define socialism? Well, we would simply quote <clears throat> the, the most famous, I can't call them the greatest because they weren't great, they were monsters, but <clears throat> the most influential communists and Marxists um, who, for example, like Stalin, who was the head of the communist, and Lenin, who was head of the communist revolution uh, <clears throat> in Russia. Lenin, uh, the Bolshevik Revolution in 1913, which turned into the Communist Revolution. And let me quote to you from memory what Lenin said. He said two things. Now remember, this was this this was the this was the mega communist revolution. And he has said, and many other notable communist leaders, they always say the same thing. They say when they're asked to define socialism in comparison to communism and Marxism, 
They always simply say, socialism is just one step towards communism and Marxism. So you see, you have all these people, like the millennials, totally ignorant of socialism, communism, Marxism, capitalism. And they're totally ignorant <clears throat> by design. They've been uh, artificially dumbed down in the school system by an elite because we have to understand that it's the globalist elite that wants a socialist, communist, Marxist system. Now, that may, that may appear to be a total contradiction, why super capitalists would be advocating uh, Marxism, socialism, and communism. But we have to remember, they financed all the communist revolutions to begin with. Because, you see, the average person doesn't understand this, and that is that the globalist elite, the international bankers, the wealthiest people in the world, they want a communist government in every nation. You say, well, why would they want that? They're capitalists. Because they understand that when you finance a revolution in a nation like America and you move it into a socialist, and socialist is always the step towards Marxism and communism, you then, as a super wealthy international banker, globalist elite, you then have total ownership, total control over that nation in a way you couldn't get it any other way. Do you understand what I'm saying? When the super capitalists financed the communist revolution in Russia, they took all the gold, all the wealth of the czar out of Russia. <clears throat> they took control over all the, the, the geographic land, which is massive in Russia. They took control of all the oil and natural resources. And then they got to, by military force, use the working class uh, Russian peasants and the middle class Russian peasants as their slave labor. You understand what's happening here? <clears throat> Prior to the communist revolution, they were working for the czar and they were doing okay. They weren't rich, but they were doing okay. After the communist revolution, the workers, and remember, communism promises a worker's paradise, but that never happens. What happened after the communist revolution in Russia was the Russian workers were now, instead of being paid decent working class wages, decent middle class wages, <clears throat> they are now working for nothing and they have a gun pointed to their head, or they're working at slave labor wages, which is like a bowl of soup and, and, and a, a warehouse to live in with a, a dirty blanket. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Because a lot of people have to wake up. They have this romantic, utopian, mind-controlled illusion about what socialism is. It is a vehicle. Socialism is simply... <clears throat> the soft sell for communism and Marxism, all right? It has never worked, ever, in any nation that it's been implemented in. That's an historical fact. That's not an opinion. What's happening in Venezuela is the norm for a socialist communist nation. They all end up in that predicament sooner or later. And for those of you that may not know what's going on in Venezuela, <clears throat> you're seeing a nation which, under Hugo Chavez, became a socialist communist nation. And now they've put in the elite, by the way, financed that revolution. The elite are financing the current revolution. And they put, they've put in a man who's supposed to be like a soft socialist leader. He's not a soft, soft socialist leader. He's a communist. The people are starving. Families are literally selling their little girls and little boys as sex slaves in the sex trafficking industry so that they don't starve to death. Now think about that. Their economic conditions are so impoverished in this communist socialist nation of Venezuela that parents are 
in, in anguished desperation, selling their eight, nine-year-old boys and girls or younger <clears throat> for sex trafficking. Uh, you can figure out what that means. So they don't starve to death. People are being shot and killed everywhere. Uh, the supermarkets are empty. Starvation. The mil- it's a military dictatorship now. <clears throat> People are being shot in the streets and arrested. And you cannot, they will not allow you to escape out of Venezuela. If you try to escape out of Venezuela and the military catches you, they'll shoot you to death. <clears throat> this is um, the standard uh, direction in which socialism, communism, Marxism, Marxism always leads. Always. And <clears throat> there are so many textbooks, so many documentary films, so, many, so much video footage that proves this. Pictures of the horrific communist revolutions in China and Cuba and Russia and uh, North Vietnam and uh, on and on and on, North Korea, which proved the horrors of this system. It's a horrific system. And not only that, it's an antichrist system. Because in every single communist dictatorship, which, by the way, most often starts out as a socialist <coughs> nation, and all the great communist leaders, I, I don't like to use the word great, will tell you that socialism is simply the step you have to take to become communism. There's no such thing as a nation becoming you see, you talk to these communist activists and stuff, and they're so brainwashed, they don't even know their own history. They act as if, well, you have an option. You can choose capitalism or socialism or communism and Marxism, and that isn't true. Socialism is not a fixed position. There's no such thing as a socialist government long term. Socialism is just the step. It's a soft sell to get you to buy in hook, line, and sinker into a Marxist communist dictatorship. That's all it is. And in different nations, it takes different periods of time for a socialist nation to become a Marxist communist nation. But our media is dumbed down. Our media is controlled. Our, our children and many generations of adults have been brainwashed and indoctrinated in the school system to think socialism is a good thing. The only people who benefit from socialism, Marxism, and communism are the globalist elite, the international banking families, the wealthiest people in the world. Ask yourself the question, why is it that all these super wealthy billionaires are always, almost without exception, very few exceptions, <clears throat> they're always funding liberal socialist causes. Is it because they're liberal? Uh, is it because they're socialists? No. They understand that by moving a society into a socialist society, they gain total power and total control and access to slave labor. That's why they, they back socialist regimes. There's an economic incentive for them. So the millennials are absolutely clueless. They are they're a vegetable level dumbed down. And now you have, and this is this statement is not this is not a political statement. It just happens to be that. The, the choices the two political parties represent at this moment. One party embraces kind of like a capitalism, socialism, and that would be the Republican Party. Many of the Republicans are socialists. And they, if they're not socialists, they're globalists. And they're somewhat capitalists. Um, because they've been, the Republican Party has been co-opted. But the current leadership at least at this particular point, where all the energy is, uh, where all the, the, the money is going in the Democratic Party, it, it's, it's hyper-driving into the hands of the most radical socialist and, in fact, communist um, uh, men and women who are going to 
run against President Trump in the next election. And when you listen to these people talk, they have the fire in their eyes of a communist revolutionary, but they'll use the word socialism because that's a soft sell. See, Bernie Sanders, he uses socialism. Now, Bernie comes off like, you know, everybody's uh, uh, favorite uncle, you know. He, he comes off uh, kind of like a nice guy, kind of like he cares, kind of like, you know, he has integrity. I mean, one thing Bernie Andrews doesn't project, he, he, he doesn't project that he's some uh, person that would want to see people die in a revolution. He doesn't project that. But his economic philosophy, is as flat as a pancake. It doesn't work anywhere. So the man is delusional, and delusional people are dangerous. And then you have a bunch of socialist Marxist radicals gaining control over the Democratic Party. And and this is this is the danger here. The way socialism, communism, and Marxism always succeeds is the political leaders who, who avow socialism and Marxism and communism always promise the working class, the downtrodden, the middle class, they promise them everything. They promise them homes. They promise them a worker's paradise. They promise them that they'll have freedoms and rights and liberties. They promise them true social justice. They promise them uh, equal, equal, fair health redistribution. They promise them uh, free health care. They promise them the best education. They promise them homes and land and high-paying jobs. Endless promises of paradise on earth. And by the way, that's Marx, uh, who, who authored the Communist Manifesto. He called it a worker's paradise. So, you see, to people that are dumbed down, and the millennial generation is, is the most dumbed down group of people that, that have arisen in America ever, to people that are dumbed down, all these promises, you know, we're going to pay off your college loans, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, to people that are ignorant and un- uneducated, and I don't, I'm not, make, I'm not saying this is a racist statement. I'm saying this as a statement that is pertinent to any ethnic or racial group or demographic group that is ignorant of history, that's ignorant of economics. They are going to be taken advantage of ruthlessly. Now, a huge percentage of the millennials happen to be white kids. Many of them them are half-white kids. but they have been dumbed down deliberately through the social engineering and indoctrination process of public education. They have been dumbed down. Uh, the white kids have been dumbed down, just like African American kids, Hispanic kids, and people from various ethnic groups, etc. They're all dumbed down. And so there's no racial uh, uh, implication here. And many of the white kids have come from privileged homes, and they're dumbed down. Because, you see, in order to sell communism to the masses, or socialism to the masses, or Marxism to the masses, it is required that the masses are first dumbed down. Because, you see, if the masses, the millennial generation, the people that the socialists and communists and Marxists are appealing to, if those people were educated, if they knew their history, and you don't have to dig in history, it's 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 front and center. If if the people the historical facts of what always happens with socialism, communism, and Marxism, they wouldn't touch it with a ten foot pole. They would consider it radioactive. They would run from it. But instead of running from it, they are being seduced by it. They're being, it's like joining a cult. That's a great way 
a great way to uh, present this in, in the form of analogy. If you want to know how the spread of socialism, communism, and Marxism works, it's exactly like being recruited by a cult. Because the exact same dynamics, the exact same psychological dynamics come into play um, when you join a cult as when you begin to be indoctrinated in socialism and Marxism and communism. And this is how it plays out. First of all, when you're in cults, you are isolated as much as possible. It's incremental. It begins with conversations, but the but the the, the goal is to immediately to isolate as quickly as you can from your friends, and your family, and people who are not part of the cult. So you are just surrounded with people uh, talking to you who are true believers in the cult, the cult doctrine, and the cult leadership and the cult behavior. So the goal is to to socially isolate you. So all you're hearing is pro-cult talk 24-7. So you, you lose your rational, critical thinking abilities. And then the cult em, employs a, a, a psychological uh, brainwashing technique called love bombing. <clears throat> and in love bombing, in a cult, you will receive lots of love and hugs and affirmation and praises. And, and many people are literally starving for that kind of love and affirmation and praises. <clears throat> that is intoxicating to people who have never had that. But it's not done sincerely. It's done to manipulate you to, to become deeper and deeper and committed to the, to the cult. Then the cult will begin to indoctrinate you with their belief system, whether it's a spiritual belief system, an economic belief system, a combination of both. You will hear the doctrines and the teachings of the cult. And like you have legitimate religions like Christianity, and people are taught to worship Jesus Christ as Lord, <clears throat> and honor is given. To, to Christ. Well, in cults, you substitute God and Jesus Christ for human beings who are either gurus or spiritual teachers or, or communist revolutionaries like Karl Marx and Lenin and Castro, etc., etc. And you begin to worship those people. And then you're told nothing but negative stuff about any other philosophy or belief system. And then you are programmed to look at life through the lens of how the cult sees life. Now, but that doesn't, everything that I've talked to you about doesn't uh, finalize the conversion process. And see, this is the same thing that happens with communist revolutionaries and socialism. You have to remember that since its beginning, since its beginning with the writing of the Communist Manifesto, Communism, Marxism, Socialism, it spreads through spiritual deception, mind control, and what is known as communist brainwashing techniques, communist propaganda techniques. Now, in the 50s and the 40s, and in other periods in our country, uh, our intelligence agencies, the FBI, <clears throat> the police, etc., were on hyper alert uh, over the reality that America had been infiltrated by all kinds of communist revolutionaries. Some of them would hide out as people in the entertainment business or authors or journalists or intellectuals or politicians or musicians, etc. And they would convert other people in the same field, okay? And this, this uh, method of conversion really is, it's a form of brainwashing. 
And you may ask, well, what's the difference between that and, and you know, going to a church and hearing the Bible and committing your life to Christ? The difference is the outcome or the product or the result. The outcome or the product or result of every single communist nation, Marxist nation, socialist nation, especially as it moves from socialism to communism and Marxism, the result is always the same. It's an historical fact. The people lose all their freedoms. The nation becomes a police state and a military dictatorship. Countless millions of people are killed, slaughtered, shot, and starved to death. There is no social justice. It's all a big lie. The seductive promise of social justice never happens. The workers' paradise never happens. You don't get a whole bunch of freedoms. You lose all your freedoms. And if you dare to speak out and criticize a communist state, you will be shot in the head and your family will be killed. Then you suffer economic poverty. You work for slave labor wages or you work for free with a gun pointed to your head. Everything you were promised turns out to be right. But now, because of your naivete, because you allowed yourself to be brainwashed, you're, you can't escape from a communist nation. Because you see the difference between a communist nation and America, which is based on Christian principles and biblical principles is this. There are guards, <coughs> guard towers, and the military that do not allow people to escape from communist Marxist nations. You're locked inside a communist Marxist nation um, like you're locked inside a prison. And if you try to escape a communist nation, they won't allow you to escape. They won't allow you to move your money out. If you try to cross the border, you'll be shot. And this is true for all the communist nations. You're locked inside a giant prison camp called a communist nation. Now, conversely, when you have a free nation like America, despite the fact that it's criticized, you have millions of people trying to sneak across the border to get into America, which is the land of opportunity because of its Christian principles. Millions of people are trying to sneak across the border into America. They're not trying to leave America. Nobody's sneaking out of America to leave America. And then in Europe, you have <clears throat> people trying to sneak into different European nations. But the number one nation that everybody wants to sneak into is America because it's the freest, most prosperous nation on planet Earth, because of its Christian capitalist belief system. So you have all these political leaders that want to take us into socialism and communism and Marxism. Well, that's insanity, because communism, Marxism, and socialism, those are the nations where people aren't allowed to escape those nations. And the nation that's built on capitalism and Christianity is called America. And nobody is trying to escape from America for the most part. But millions are trying to sneak in. So why would any rational person who had any minimal understanding of economics, economic consequences, economic theory, economic reality, choose to, to force a Force the most prosperous nation on planet Earth, which, uh, uh, which with all its faults, still offers the most opportunity to the most people. Why would political leaders try to hijack America and force it to go into a socialist Marxist system, which will which will then very quickly make America a hellhole like Venezuela? And these other nations, you, you see the, the, the dilemma here. Well, the way it works is brainwashing, mind control, propaganda, indoctrination, and lies. Because nobody who knows the truth about communism, socialism, and Marxism, nobody who 
knows the truth about how their economic systems work. Nobody who knows the truth about the uh, glaring historical examples all around us of what happens to the people and nations in communist systems. Nobody who is dealing with reality and truth and ha has a, a, a right mind would ever consider going down the path of socialism, communism, and Marxism. It's a suicide march. And on top of it, in the last hundred years or so, when you add up the death toll of these nations that had these massive communist revolutions like communist China, communist Russia, uh, North Korea, Cuba, Cambodia, and so on and so forth, Remember, the, the real numbers and actual deaths have been concealed as much as possible. But many, many expert researchers believe that a minimum of 240 million people died in the last hundred years in communist nations. That's 240 million people. They were starved to death. They were shot to death. They were forced to work in education or concentration camps where they dropped dead. And that's a lot of people to die. You can blame America for everything. America never killed 240 million people. See, that's the truth versus the lie about communism. So what, what kind of spiritual... Uh, reality exists in the hearts and the minds of leaders that would want to take our nation in that direction when the truth, historical reality, documents very clearly what the inevitable results are of communism, Marxism, and socialism. They wouldn't. So what, what, is, what is driving people to accept it? Well, it goes back to the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden had everything. And it had social justice. It had abundance and wealth. It was beautiful. God took care <clears throat> of mankind's every need and abundance. <clears throat> it was a totally world. It was paradise on earth. On earth it was heaven. The only, the only God required of Adam and Eve was that they were not to eat from the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. That's all he said. So Adam and Eve were in paradise. They lacked nothing. They were immortal. And what was the system that they were living under that produced such incredible blessings? It was the biblical system of the creator God, the biblical God. It was his principles that allowed for Adam and Eve to live in heaven on earth. Now, what occurred? Why would anybody in their right mind give up paradise on earth, abundance, prosperity, uh, a perfect world, immortality? Why would anybody in their right mind who, who was sane do anything to jeopardize living in paradise in the Garden of Eden? Well, we find out. Because I'm trying to suggest that America is the Garden of Eden, or it's paradise, but with all of America's faults, in comparison to many, many nations, we could safely say that America, with all of its faults, is a lot closer to paradise in the Garden of Eden than these other dictatorships and police states uh, that are communist and Marxist all around the world. So there is a comparison here. Why would anybody in their right mind want to give, again, I'm not equating America with the Garden of Eden and paradise, but I'm saying <clears throat> in comparison to the communist hellhole, hell holes that are all over the earth, I mean, how would you like to live in China? You're monitored 24-7. So are we. But in China, they have a social credit score. Every move you make is being analyzed by a computer. 
If you say something against the Communist Party, if you read a Bible, you get points deducted. And it doesn't take long where you cannot ploy. You're stopping to death. You see, they have total control. How would you like to live in a system where not only are you being monitored, monitored, but they are totally controlling and micromanaging every second of your life? And you're either racking up positive scores and negative scores. If you, for example, uh, cross the street on a red light, <clears throat> you get negative social scores. And it doesn't take long to accumulate. If you accumulate enough negative, you're, you're <clears throat> worse than a slave. You can't get a job. That's hell on earth. That's a police state. That's a dictatorship. That's what George Orwell was warning about in his book 1984 with Big Brother. Okay, so Adam and Eve had everything. They had paradise. Not Karl Marx's paradise, which is a lie. Why did they give it up? Is Lucifer, Lucifer or the devil? And by the way, Satan is the father of lies. Lies is his standard operating procedure. Lucifer manifested himself in the form of an erect reptilian being and used lying, because Satan is the father of lies, spiritual deception, and the wiles of the devil, which is like psychological spiritual manipulation, and convinced Eve <clears throat> by mixing the truth of what God said with lies that God was holding out something on them. And so he seduced Eve, not sexually, he seduced her uh, with the lust of being God to eat from the fruit of, in, of the tree in the middle of the garden. And then she got her husband to do it. And what happened? Exactly what God warned. <clears throat> they activated the law of sin and death. They were <clears throat> immediately evacuated from paradise. Their bodies began to die. All of nature was corrupted. They activated the law of sin and death, and every horrible thing and wicked thing that came out of the human heart began to manifest in the earth. Crime, child rape, uh, I don't, won't, won't even go on, of the hideous sins that man has committed, all happened because they disobeyed God's commandment. And then Satan became the temporary God of this world. So, <clears throat> what was the driving force that caused Adam and Eve to make such a, a decision that was worse than suicide? What was the driving force? The driving force was Lucifer or Satan used the wiles of the devil, which is a combination of brainwashing, mind control, hypnosis. Because you see, mind control, brainwashing, and hypnosis all have their roots in ancient occult and satanic secret societies. You understand? So, things like hypnosis, brainwashing, mind control have their beginnings in ancient satanic and occult societies. That's because it is Lucifer who gave mankind the satanic techniques of mind control, brainwashing, spiritual deception, and hypnosis. Why? Because <clears throat> that's how you can dominate a man or a woman's life. You can make them a slave. That is how Adam and Eve... <clears throat> lost their right minds, their minds were put under a spell, they were under mind control, they were hypnotized, they went along with it, and they, they, they activated the law of sin and death, and they lost heaven on earth. Because you see, look, let's face the facts, nobody in their right mind, nobody, who's, nobody where the light bulb is on in your mind, Nobody who's in their right mind, who's sane, rational, and thinking clearly. Nobody but nobody gives up the Garden of Eden, paradise, 
immortality, where everything you could possibly want is yours. Nobody in their right mind gives that all up <clears throat> to be a dying individual uh, living in a world ruled by Satan where sin and every kind of abomination is now filling the earth. Nobody does that unless they've been bewitched, put under a spell. I'm very serious about what I'm saying here. And by the way, you're listening to the Paul McGuire Report on Paul McGuire. This program will wake somebody up who's in a trance state, who's in a hypnotic state. Now, one of the characteristics of people in a hypnotic state is they don't believe they're in a hypnotic state, but they are anyway. It's the same thing with cult indoctrination. I could name 10 cults. You'd know the names of many of them. They put people through the same process. Because, you see, nobody in their right mind <clears throat> would join most of these cults if they weren't being brainwashed and hypnotized and subject to mind control. Let take, let's take the Jim Jones Kool-Aid drinking cult. Who in their right mind follows a psychotic, demonic leader to, what, what was it, Guyana? And then they commit mass suicide by drinking poisoned Kool-Aid. Nobody, and there were a lot of them who saw uh, what happened to their friends when they drank the Kool-Aid. So they, they, they had some time to think about it. Who voluntarily follows this cult leader to Ghana and then drinks Kool-Aid filled with poison and dies? That's not something that a rational person does. But somebody who is brainwashed by a cult, somebody who's under mind control, somebody who's under, who's under hypnotic programming does. So, Amaka is in great danger because, because right as we speak, you have to understand that this, this concept of the bliss elite is a reality. They use communism, Marxism, and socialism for their ends. An enormous amount of brainwashing, propaganda, mind control, hypnotic programming is being targeted towards youth and adults through media, through music, through entertainment, through college, through education, through through cultural leaders, many generations of young people, especially the millennials, are being brainwashed right now. Okay? Scientific mind control, brainwashing, being placed into hypnotic states, being exposed to propaganda, mind control, because this is the standard operating procedure about how communism has always spread. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you can't say, oh, they're too smart to do that. They'll come to their senses. They're not. You, you, you have to understand, we have millions and millions of people in America right now <clears throat> who are not in their right minds. They're like Adam and Eve. They're like the people who join these cults. They're being subjected to a campaign of insidious mind control and brainwashing. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. And the truth will set you free. And I want to ask you something. There are others who are telling you the truth. I thank God for that. But I know for a fact <clears throat> that the vast majority of people who call themselves Christian ministers are not telling the people the truth. And they're setting their people up like lambs to the slaughter. And some of you, not all of you, you are, are participating in that by empowering it. Now, I want to say this. 
you have to understand that there are very, very powerful people behind the scenes. Call it the shadow government, call it the deep state, call it the globalist elite who own four globalist elite corporations on all the mainstream media. Why is the entire mainstream media, with few exceptions, <laughs> indoctrinating people into socialism, Marxism, and communism? And not only that, they are programming the masses and the young people. Even as we speak, there is a concerted effort to program, brainwash, use scientific mind control, propaganda, hypnosis. Youth and many other groups are being programmed right now for the purpose of race war erupt in the, in the United States of America. And <clears throat> the, 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 the people who are the targets of this scientific mind control, brainwashing, propaganda, hypnosis, etc., they are of all races. There's programming and hypnosis and brainwashing targeted towards white people working class, middle class, different ages. They're being targeted with programming. African Americans are being targeted with programming. Hispanic, other groups targeted with programming. The reason being is the globalist elite operate under a methodology where if they can get the races to fight each other, then they declare martial law, they get their police dictatorship, they get the, the, the uh, permission to establish a communist-type dictatorship. And they can do it by secretly inciting every race to hate the other race, divide and conquer. That's going on right now. It's been going on for, for years. So we are at perhaps one of the most worst points in the history of America. Did you see the video the other day that was released, that went viral, where I suppose it was young people, they were calling for this in this video that went viral on the internet. They were calling for all Trump supporters to be thrown into concentration camps. You heard what I just said. I'm not going to repeat it. You, you heard what I just said. If you think words like that are insignificant and will never amount to anything, then you have said exactly what the Jews said when they said it can't happen here. Words matter. Videos that, that matter. The seeds of thought. They spread. They can spread like wildfire. Through scientific mind control, brainwashing, and propaganda, you can whip up human emotions into a frenzy. That's why I'm telling you, we're at the, one of the most dangerous places <clears throat> in American history. And if we do not do what we are being called to do, um, to, to avoid this catastrophe, the catastrophe is going to play out as it's already scripted unless this happens. And it's a quote that you know. The only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men or good women to do nothing. And right now, with the exception of the remnant church and many of you, the vast majority of Christians are, I guess they're good men and women, and they're doing nothing. They're not even aware of the danger. Now, what happens historically when people are being set up to be slaughtered? They're, be they're being demonized. By the way, when you begin to demonize any group, you're setting them up to psychologically program people to not view them as humans. And when you don't view people as humans, then you can kill them without any 
conscience or conflict. It is because of this. This is a sober message, but but it needs to be said. It is because of this that I've spent decades researching in detail. It's, a, it's, it's an area that, that I didn't necessarily want to get into, but I had to get into it. I have been studying scientific mind control, brainwashing, propaganda, advertising, persuasion, hypnotic programming, history, how it was used in history, how it was used in Nazi Germany with Adolf Hitler, how it was used by Lenin in the Communist Revolution, studying the scientific aspects of it in great detail. And I realized that unless I spread this message and educate others as fast as I can, that's the only way to make people immune from effects of mind control and brainwashing, the only way to, to protect them from succumbing to, to the hypnotic deception is to teach people the basics, just the basics, in a fast-moving, high-powered way where people can say, oh, I recognize that they're doing that, they're saying that, because this is a way they're going to, they're, they're using this to change my behavior and beliefs. And if you can educate people fast enough, while, while the time is still here, you can prevent the emerging dictatorship and totalitarian state that the globalist elite want. You're not going to undo by the prophecy in the long term. There will be an Antichrist. There will be a mark of the beast. There will be a false prophet. There will be a tribulation period. But we're not there yet. And if you're wondering if we're there or not, you'll know. When we start to be there, you won't have to ask me. You'll know. Okay? But let's not, let's not be irresponsible and lazy, okay, and say that we're there. Jesus Christ said, occupy until I come. We still have freedoms. Okay? The Antichrist has not emerged. The mark of the beast is not being distributed. So we still have been given an opportunity, but we must use the opportunity. I want to, with everything in me, encourage you to get the resources you need to be educated as fast as possible into what I've just been talking about regarding mind control. And I've arranged it in a four-book bundle discount where you can get the four books I've written that, that most clearly deal with this subject in a special bundle discount. And then you can get the video documentary I've just produced called American Mind Wars, The Coming Crisis Event. And you can download it on the internet. And I believe, believe you must get the video documentary American Mind Wars, uh, The Coming Crisis Event, and the four-book bundle. Because it will teach you in a fast-moving, entertaining, by entertaining, I mean, it, th these are not like boring academic books. They deal with Illuminati, music videos, contemporary culture, and all kinds of things. The first book is Conquering the Matrix. You will learn how to recognize if you are under hypnotic programming or somebody you know is under hypnotic programming and what you can do to break it. I talk about EMF waves, 5G cell phone programming, voice to skull programming, many, many other things. But I expose the techniques of brainwashing, like repetition, like um, waiting to someone is sleepy and tired in the evening to slip in messages into the subconscious mind. And then I explain the conscious mind and the subconscious mind in simple ways. Because you see, 
all hypnotic programming and brainwashing works on this principle. You bypass a person's kiss and, and rat mind and you slip the commands and the programming into people's subconscious mind without them knowing it. That's one of the major principles. But unless you understand that, you can't protect yourself from it. I talk about that in Conquering the Matrix. Then in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, I talk about how the Nazi mind control scientists developed modern mind control through their MK Ultra program. And the formula for the MK Ultra program is pain or shock, drugs, and hypnosis. Pain, drugs, and hypnosis. And the drug that the Nazi rocket scientists use, which I talk in detail about in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, part of the four book bundle. Remember, the Nazi rocket scientists subjected their mind control victims in the concentration camps to extreme pain. They dosed them heavily with, with a specific, that drug is called LSD, the most po powerful mind altering drug known to man. And then they would hypnotize them through a variety of means. And they would produce things like Manchurian candidates, where you can program somebody to be an assassin by using a trigger word or a symbol. And that person won't even remember that, that, they, that they assassinated somebody. That's what MK Ultra does. And I explain the entire true story of MK Ultra. Many people have ripped me off on the book, put it in their own books and stuff. You know what? I can't worry about that. At least the message is getting out. But I talk about the truth of it that no, no one else has written on. And that is that at the very core of the Nazi uh, mind control science program, at the very core of it was the fact that the Nazi mind control scientists were deeply involved satanic panic systems, dark occult secret societies like the Vril Society, the Thule Society, uh, Skull and Bones, and the satanic principles, the witchcraft principles, and the occult principles that these secret societies had secret knowledge of was integrated into Nazi mind control scientists and Nazi mind control programming. And I explained that secret in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America. And I've read a lot of other people's books and articles, and I've never seen anybody touch that at its very core. Then another book in the bundle is A Prophecy of the Future of America, 2016-2017. Ignore the year dates on the book. The book is as timely now as it was when I wrote it like a year ago. A Prophecy of the Future of America, 2016-2017. I deal specifically, specifically with how the middle class in America and the working class in America, their incomes were deliberately devalued. But I talk about the 1%, the mind control they used, why most conservatives were oblivious to the trade treaties until Trump came along, even though I was writing about the trade treaties 20 years ago. And, and this comes to me right now, and, and this is one of the things I talk about in, in my book bundle, in the different books, God's people are being seduced by false prophets. I heard a man who claimed to be a prophet of God, um, and he said on television that God gave him a revelation. Now, this man is claiming to be a prophet of God that God gave him a vision and a revelation that America, Mexico, and Canada were going to be one nation and was going to use it as an example of the world, and it would be a super, super prosperous nation. Well, that sounds good, doesn't it? Doesn't sound good to me. 
That is a lie. And I had, and, and this man had the, the audacity to call that a prophecy from God. I warned about this coming merger of Canada, Mexico, and the United States, which is, I don't know, the man didn't seem to be particularly educated, but he did prophesy falsely quite, quite a bit. That is called the North American Union. His prophecy was that of a North American Union, which is a globalist plan to merge America, the Americas, into a global government. Now, why would God speak through one of his prophets saying he was going to raise up a global government or part of a global government, which is in complete violation of his word, and it's a complete endorsement of Mystery Babylon. The man was trying to say that essentially what was Mystery Babylon, what was the the global government in the book of Revelation, which God was was using. Do, do, you, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you see the demonic nature of the, full, the false prophet? I wrote about this in numerous books. In fact, in 2015, I wrote my book, Are You Ready?, where I talked in detail about the North American Union. I quoted the Council on Foreign Relations, because the Council on Foreign Relations did about 100 pages of detailed reports about how it was the goal of the globalists using secret trade treaties like NAFTA and GATT to uh, bring about a one-world government. And the way they would do that is they would create first 10 regional global governments. One would be Canada, Mexico, and the United States. So this guy is prophesying what the occult, globalist, Luciferian elite are doing. You know, he's a false prophet, but God's people are just swallowing up. And, and, and they, they're ignorant. And I'm trying to prevent this. So you need to get these books to educate your friends. I can see people like that going all over the country, spreading a complete lie. Now, the other book in the bundle is Mass Awakening. And I give quotes from the British elite, occult elite, who planned out the scientific dictatorship, Aldous Huxley and others, and their whole game plan was to use scientific mind control to enslave the masses, and they, could, they were confident that they could program, program the masses so effectively to be slaves that the masses would not even be aware they were slaves and would enjoy their duties as slaves. And I explain how that has taken off in my book, Mass Awakening, and how the elite and the occult are now in the process of igniting a mass satanic awakening. But the other part of the book, I deal with how God wants to bring about a biblical, Bible-centered, third great awakening that would depose the satanic mass awakening. And I'm not talking about a counterfeit revival. I'm talking about a biblical revival. But that means that God's people have to call upon God and use the weapons of their warfare, which are mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Also in the book, deal with satanic strongholds and how the Word of God and the Holy Spirit can dislodge satanic strongholds from your mind. What's a satanic stronghold? It's an idea or thought inside of us that's energized by Satan, but it can be dismantled by the power of God. So this is the four-book bundle that you need to get. There's lots, lots more in it. I deal with Illuminati music videos, Aleister Crowley, the Satanist, uh, how he interfaced with the Nazi rocket scientists, and, and so much more. And then the video documentary that you must watch, you can download it at paulmcguire.us. It's called American Mind Wars, The Coming Crisis Event. Now, what do I mean by that? People are being programmed right now, subliminally, subconsciously, race wars, racial hostility. And I talk about this in my books. Um, And they're also being programmed to accept socialism. And 
But this is all done by brainwashing because socialism never improved life, life of anybody. You know, I talk about this in all the books. Masking. The Bill of Rights and the Constitution is the only legal document among any nation on planet Earth which where our governing documents acknowledge God, and they're based on God. So in our constitution, unlike communist constitutions and the UN and the EU constitution, it says that the creator, God, has given us certain inalienable rights, such as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These other governmental documents don't even acknowledge God. They say man is God. And when it, that says that the creator has given us all these rights, it means that God gave us our rights and no government has the right to take them away. See, America has a completely different system. It's based on the Bible. And then freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press. I mean, it's supposed to be true freedom. These other nations don't have that. Read carefully the EU document. And I explain this. I break it down in Conquering the Matrix. The European Union... Uh, rights, the, the complete uh, uh, scam. You you go down. They they number their rights, and you go down half the page, and then all the rights are undone if you criticize the European Union or any of its ways, any of its philosophy. Then they they will fine you or imprison you retroactively. Well, how, how is that freedom of speech or freedom of the press? It's not. It's a complete lie. And the UN documents say the same thing. They're lies. So this is a very dangerous period we're in. And unless we educate people as fast as possible, and we're going to lose our freedoms. Truth will set us free. Yes, we have to pray. Yes, we have to seek God. But truth will set us free. So I want to encourage you to get the four-book bundle and download the documentary American Mind Wars, The Coming Crisis Event. And you can do that by going to paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. But then share it. Invite people over. Make sure it's shown at a youth group instead of the dribble that, that, that the youth are being given. Show these things. Use them uh, as tools. Educate people. They're, they're discounted. You can get them for other people. But unless you spread the word, nobody else will. Because that's what, if you, if, you, if you look around behind you, you'll discover there's not a whole lot of people behind you standing with you. But God has always, always honored a faithful remnant. And God is not restricted. Uh, God doesn't need a lot of people to win. God just needs a faithful remnant. So we can turn this thing around if we call upon the power of God. And that's what God has called me to do. That's what God has called me to do with Paul McGuire Ministries and Paradise Mountain Church. And by the way, if you're listening to me right now, we're meeting tonight. And uh, you can get the directions. Uh, we'll be at the Sportsman's Lodge in Studio City tonight. And you need to be there and worship with us and fellowship with, with believers who are like-minded. So go to paulmcguire.us, paulmcguire.us, and this, let me lay out the mission. The mission is this. I've got to have your prayers, because everything I said is based on the biblical principle that our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the curse of darkness in heavenly places. Therefore, I must have an army of prayer warriors who are interceding for me, my family, in this ministry. And I thank God for the army I already have. I thank all of you for your constant prayers and notes of encouragement. Without your prayers, believe me, nothing happens. This is a spiritual battle. Number two, the internet is rigged and it's getting, there's no such word as riggier and riggier, but I'm going to use it. They keep rigging the internet worse and worse. Hiding truth, censoring truth. Those of you that know how to send links and the easiest way to do an end run around the rigging is take the Paul McGuire report, take our videos, take our other stuff, 
and send it, you send it directly to your social media as a link. That gets by the uh, computerized sensors. And many of you know how to do it, and every one of you know how to send a link. Spread it. Send the shows out and stuff. Because if people just go through the general algorithms, they're designed to send them to like ABC, CBS, NBC, and all that dribble. Finally, um, I thank God for those of you who pray for us and those of you who seek the Lord on how you can financially contribute or financially donate because we are in a spiritual war fighting a spiritual battle and it has to be financed to occupy more territory, to reach more souls for Christ, to penetrate walls of darkness. We have to expand our operation and get increased technology and and grow. The time may come when we can't do this. But you see, if we win the battle now, which requires finances, then that time won't come when we can't do it. Because if we win the battle now, we will be able to do it. So I want to thank God for each one of you who uh, seek the Lord and you obey him when it comes to you making contributions and donations. We're in this together. You know, we are the body of Christ. Every one of us who have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, Jesus lives in, Holy Spirit lives in, in us. We're to be functioning as one body, taking our directions from the head, who is Jesus Christ. And if we do that, the Apostle Paul promises that as the body of Christ, we will tread upon the serpents and scorpions. Those are the demonic powers. We will not be tread upon, but we will tread upon the serpents and scorpions. God bless you on Paul McGuire. Visit paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. Mm-hmm.